I started drugs uh, when I was 13 and I started injecting uh, when I was about 15. But when I fell pregnant at 18 with my first child, I stopped. So in my life, I have not always been a drug user. Um, at the same time, I've been a sex worker. And the majority of sex work don't take drugs when uh, or if they are working. For a start, uh, it's very uncomfortable uh, to do sex work if you're high and also you lose feeling and you don't have as much control over your body uh, or what happened to you. It's also a myth that all sex workers only do uh, this kind of work to pay for their drug habit. Uh, we sell service, uh, like a musician will provide service uh, by playing an instrument to make uh, music to get money. Uh, sex worker work is like any, any other job. Uh, I mean, uh, to get enough money for paying uh, for somewhere to live or to feed and clothe your children or to pay for health care or even university education. In addition to stigma associated with being a sex worker or drug user, there's a risk of catching AIDS or uh, HIV or having to deal with violence and abuse or even be coerced or and exploited. Uh, and violence against sex worker is a constant worry. In 2007, my best friend was killed. Uh, she was a sex worker too. Um, one night, Two men recognized her on a, on a bar, like a regular bar, and gave her some really strong drug. And then they kidnapped her, uh, raped her, and killed her. Uh, the drugs they gave her were too much strong for her. Uh, she was usually uh, using uh, cocaine, and it was uh, heroin instead. So I was very devastated, and her body was covered of bruise. Um, then, uh, her credit card and her, uh, jewelry has been stolen too. She had clearly been viol uh, violently assaulted, but the police said she died of uh, an overdose and did nothing to investigate it, uh, because she was a sex worker and she had, at that time, a criminal worker, a criminal record for, uh, being a sex worker. And they didn't want to investigate due to her uh, prostitution criminal case. I was really, really frustrated. And uh, it's when I started working as an uh, advocate for violence against sex worker, also uh, for harm reduction. Uh, my goal is to help sex worker avoiding risk uh, they could control like uh, using condom or uh, injecting with needles, clean needles, and help them to denounce violence. I wanted to give them a voice uh, to speak up for their right and safety and help lift their self-esteem of how they, uh, they see themselves. For a sex worker, finding somewhere to live can be a real problem. In Canada, uh, being a sex worker is no longer illegal, but being a client or a customer of a sex worker is illegal. So um, if a landlord know what you do, uh, they might call the police to have their client arrest, which makes sex worker, uh, uh, which makes sex worker feel like feel very vulnerable and open to exploitation. Uh, landlord also often assume that uh, you are going to be taking illegal drug in, in your home and could call the police at any time because of that. What happened is a sex worker won't admit to a landlord what they do and then it's difficult to prove that they can pay the, uh, 
that they can pay the rent if uh, the landlord wants to do financial uh, check on you. Uh, the majority of uh, sex workers are unseen. Uh, they are independent or working in, uh, like an example, as a, in a massage parlor or inside uh, an hotel. Uh, at their home uh, and they work from home and only a majority are on the street. But that's all people really see uh, when they judge a sex worker. If they have children, they might work during school time, but people assume that you can't, you can't be a responsible parent. I uh, myself was checked out uh, by child protection officer one time uh, when my son was still at school. Um, someone knew that I I did uh, I was sex worker and to make money, and the school started asking a question to my son about how he was treated at home and did his, his mom like to party, take drugs, things like that. Uh, these officers then came uh, to my home uh, to check whatever my son had his own bedroom or even if there was enough food in the fridge or even like if uh, the mattress was uh, comfortable. Uh, it is scary, and despite it's been uh, being illegal to be a sex worker in Canada, those with children live in fear of being separate from them. Four years ago, in 2016, I had a terrible neck pain, really bad. So I went to see my doctor. Um, I was honest and told that doctor that I used to be injecting drug um, in the past and I had to start it again because of the pain. From uh, that moment, he treated me like an addict uh, who was trying to get uh, opiate painkiller uh, to get high. He wasn't interested to uh, helping me in any way. Um, on uh, one visit, I was in such in pain and uh, he just told me that to stop crying like a baby. He didn't investigate uh, why my neck hurt. Um, then I moved in another uh, province uh, in Canada for work. I collapsed one day uh, and the doctor there investigated and uh, told me that I have a tumor on my neck. This doctor asked, uh, asked me why my old physician hadn't helped me because by now it was too late to operate and or to remove uh, that tumor. What could I say? Uh, I was a drug user and I was a sex worker and I carried the double stigma of that and I have to live uh, with that consequence. Uh, of that uh, mistake of stigma uh, of the first doctor gave me. So society uh, judge sex worker and drug user uh, without any real knowledge of uh, who they are. Um, and the truth is uh, we are just uh, as individual as everyone else and shouldn't be stigmatized for our choice. Um, but anyway, I am proud to be someone who fight for that. Mm -hmm.